People of God, listen up. We're going to start off with some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your glory, dear Father. Uh, we thank you for just coming into your presence today, dear Lord. We know that you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to wake us up, give us the breath of life, but you did it. And we thank you and we just give you all of the glory, dear Lord. Uh, we pray that through this discussion that there is some edification. We pray that it's fruitful, dear Lord. We pray that it bears fruit, dear Father, and that you just... Send us your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, that we may glorify you and do the will of the Father. We just thank you for shining your light upon us. Dear Lord, give us patience with one another. Dear Father, uh, give us self-control. Grant us peace. Give us a sound mind, dear Lord. We pray these things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. I want to bring y'all to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 okay it says i'm reading in the niv version have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them okay 12 it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. OK, so. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. I think a lot of people get this confused exactly what this means. You know, what, what is Paul talking about? He's talk, he's speaking to the church of Ephesus, you know. So when he's talking to these, these are believers. He's talking to these born again believers. And now, excuse me, there's a mixed multitude. So you got Jews who are, some of them, you know, are born again. And then you got the Gentiles who are born again you know, in this congregation where Paul is, he's telling them, Hey, have nothing to do with this, with these works of darkness. What is works of darkness? Works of darkness is anything that's sinful, but it's a, it's not, it's not simply a sin, but it's a lifestyle. It's a practice. You know, the works of darkness is a practice of, of, of dark deeds. You know, anything, anything sinful is a dark deed. You know, so it's not just limited to like witchcraft and, you know, divination and all those things. But sin itself is a dark deed. But this is referring to the lifestyle of sin. This is referring to the practice of sin. And now the ultimate darkness that we have on this earth today is <laughs> the government. Now, we know that. Apostle Paul in in Second Corinthians, you know, chapter four, verse four, he says that Satan is the God of this world. We know what Jesus said in the book of John. He said, hey, my kingdom is not of this world. So this world that we're living in, this is Satan's dominion. Apostle Paul already told you that. But I mean, we already know that if, you know, from Matthew chapter four where he, uh, Satan tried to bribe Jesus, took him up on the highest point of the temple, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, trying to bribe him. I will give you all these kingdoms of the world. How does Satan have all the kingdoms of the world in his possession? How is that possible? In order for him to have that, that means that he has dominion over the world. And mind you, then you have the uh, the believers that say, well, when Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead and he took the keys, you know, now Jesus has the dominion over the earth. Well, that will contradict what he says when he say, my kingdom is not of this world. That, that's a contradiction. It contradicts each other. So either his kingdom is this world or it's not of this world. Pick one can't be both and that's the point that i'm making 
So Satan has dominion over this earth. And in order to have the dominion over this earth, what does that mean? That means you would have to control the systems that's put in place that controls the earth. The systems that's put in place are the governments that makes laws and the monetary system. You know, so the money systems, the banking, the bankers, that stuff, that would have to be, you would have to have all of that in your power, all of that, you know, in your pocket in order to be saying, oh, this person controls the world. He got all the money. He makes the laws. He creates the laws that's set in place where we have to follow these rules and we have to you would have to have all that in your pocket in order to control the world. So when it says Satan is the God of this world, he's in control of all of that. Now, I know for a fact in America, <laughs> these shadow governments, because I mean, our, our government is, is a normal government, but at some point, these evil cults, the Illuminati, the Jesuits, Masons, all these different cults, you know, that pledge allegiance to Satan and does the will of Satan. They infiltrated the government and took it over. And that's how we are where we at now today. But then you got all these believers that's like, oh, he's just a. Uh, a Christian conspiracy theorist. He's just spewing conspiracies. I mean, it's already laid out for you. They put it right in front of your face. You know, they symbols, they signs, you know. Can't no one, can't no one convince me that pentagrams and, you know, all these different things is not of Satan. When, when uh, people who worship Satan... You know, the real people that do, uh, you know, witchcraft, one, one of, they have different, they have different rituals they do. One of the rituals, like a seance and stuff like that, you seen in the movies growing up, you know, one of them, you put a pentagram on the floor, you draw it on the floor, whatever the case, put candles on each point of it, light the candles, and they got this Satan book, this Satan Bible, witchcraft book or something, and they chanting the words, they chanting it out. You know, like the Roman Catholics do when they chant and stuff back and forth. This is how they do. The Satanists do. And they chant these things to summon up demons, you know, to get this evil spiritual power or whatever the case, whatever it is they're trying to do. Put a spell on somebody or, you know, whatever it is. They got, you know, a multitude of things that they do with this witchcraft. So those are evil things. Now I'm not superstitious, but I I don't I don't mess with I don't want nothing to do with it, you know I'm not scared of it, and I know it's you know it can't harm me because I know who I am in Christ, I know I've been bought by His blood, you know so there's nothing that can pluck me out of His hand. There's nothing that can pluck you out of His hand, you know so. But these things are so is is you know you you can't argue that these things aren't associated with Satan. And that you can clean these things up and use these symbols and use these signs and, you know, oh, it's a pentagram for Jesus or it's a, you know, where, where do we draw the line? <laughs> where do we draw the line at? You know, and so these people no doubtedly control the earth and having that control. We talking governments, laws, we talking the money, banking system. We talk in Hollywood, the entertainment industry. That's the most powerful thing. That's one of the most powerful things on the planet is if you can control a vision. If you can tell a vision, like television, if you could tell a vision by putting images on a screen, you control those images. So you can put two men on a screen kissing, you know, making out two dudes, something that's against nature itself 
and is actually the opposite of nature, the opposite of God, you know, depravity. But you can put that image on a screen and kids can see that image and be influenced and think it's okay. Say, so you know what? I want to try that. Or that's that's the very beginning door open is usually perpetual uh, images, perpetual, you know, constant um, influence of these things that causes someone to become indoctrinated or influenced by those images. You know, a lot of people don't know that's that, that that's uh, part of the thing that happened in Germany, you know, before uh, before Hitler came up and doing everything that he did. The the fake Jews. Who also are in the fraternal order. Mind you, all these uh, Illuminati people, all these people claim to be Jews, every single one of them. They all claim to be Jews. And when they say Jews, they're talking about the Jews from the Bible. They claim to be, oh, we're the people from the Bible. We the people that was King David and, you know, whooping on a giant. And you know what I'm saying? Joseph and his brothers. That's who we are. We go back to those people. That's what they're saying. That's what they claim to be. Now, anybody who's been around long enough know that they're imposters and you know wicked to the core i mean it don't it don't take a rocket scientist to see that but they all claim to be jews these people what they did in germany before hitler came up in the ranks is you know back then 20s and 30s and all this they didn't have tv but they had like matinee you know movie theaters stuff like that they would put homosexual images on the screens they will put all of this debauchery on the screens, you know, smoking, you know, women smoking and men kissing and having, you know what I'm saying? They would, they would flood the screens. They would flood your eye, your, your, your eye gates, you know, the Bible say, protect your eyes, protect your heart. They would flood your eyes with these images and the result of that many people were influenced and became homosexual and became, you know, all kinds of, you know, dysfunction in that country, whereas they haven't never seen anything like that before. So this was a psychological warfare, you know, subliminal slash overt kind of thing that they did. And they got away with it. And because of all the destruction that that did, you know, this is rose up the ranks of people like Hitler and, you know, to supposedly, you know, kill the, you know, supposedly six million Jews. Right. We know that that's not verified. But this this is what they claim. Mind you, the people that claim this is this is the same people that control this country, that control this world. These are the same people. And they put out the claims that, hey, they killed six million of us, you know. But so these are the people that run the world. They control the images. They control the money, the banking system. Now, believers say that this is conspiracy. But why? Why is it conspiracy? Is it because you don't want to be held accountable? Is it because you glorify these famous people so much or these leaders or entertainers like you admire them too much? You're going overboard. You're exalting them when you when you put someone on a pedestal, what you're doing is you're putting them you're you're glorifying them. You're not glorifying God. You're glorifying that person. Y'all remember years back when um, Kanye West when he sold a bag of <laughs> a bag of air, I'm not kidding. You can look it up. You can Google it. I'm sure it's still on there. He sold a bag of air. It was like I think like a Ziploc bag or something. He said that he breathed his breath in it, zipped it up, and sold it. And I think for like I don't know how much it was, about fifty, sixty thousand or something. Something just ridiculous, stupid. These people consider themselves to be God. 
these people portray to be God. They portray, you know, they stars. They they portray to be, you know, God in the flesh. This is why they, you know, make mockery of Jesus in their videos and stuff. And, you know, they got their arms out on the cross, you know, like Kanye and Tupac and Nas and all these old rappers and people, you know, people that do that. And they act like they they making mockery of Jesus. You know, and this is what they do. And we got believers, people who follow Christ, who born again, who have the spirit of God in them, who profess the godly lifestyle. These people glorify these entertainers over God and those entertainers can do no wrong. You, you, you can't say nothing. You can't say nothing about you can't hold them accountable without being a hypocrite, without being uh, 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 you too judgmental, without being hate speech. Truth is the new hate speech. And it's sad, but this this is what we these the days we living in. So when I see all these comments, you know, <laughs> on my YouTube about the gospel, the, you know, the gospel people. Oh, this is a man of God. You're tearing them down. No, they're tearing themselves down. This was a man who went to the church. Um, he worked for their sound or media or some type of graphic design back in 2008. I was 17 years old at 2000, in 2008. So I am getting there. He tells me, you're a prophet. You're this, you're that. You're called to do this, you're this. Again, I have no language for this. I don't know what I'm... I, thinking about I don't know what's been said to me and um, so this is all new knowledge again somebody who is new to any subject is easily um, more naive than anybody else especially when you're in an environment where you think you should trust those people um, so this is a prophet hey I'm your spiritual father this and the other um, God has placed you on my heart and I'm just in there like, huh? Yeah, I don't know. He gives me his number. Um, he wants to have a meeting. Next thing you know, we're in a homosexual relationship. So this person who said he was supposed to be my spiritual father and mentor and prophet and guide and all this other stuff, we're sleeping together. Um, well, they have this form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They deny the true power of it but they have a form of it. They have a, a image of it. You know, anybody can, can look like, you know what I'm saying? Anybody can look the part, you know, anybody can talk the talk, you know what I'm saying? But are they really walking the walk? And that's the thing that's in question. That's something that, um, uh, is, I guess is not many people <laughs> that really examine that, you know, everybody try to bring up this Matthew chapter seven, you know, don't judge. Let's, you know, what you judge is be judged to you, measure back to you in the way that you measure it. You know, that's for people who are hypocrites. That's for people who are, for one, this is what we talking about brothers in Christ, you know, who's sinning and you're, you're committing the same sins as them and you judge them on that. You're a hypocrite. That's what Christ called them. He said, man, you're a hypocrite. Wipe that speck out your eye. Then you can see clearly to, to get the, the speck out your brother's eye. John chapter seven, verse 24 says, judge righteously. What does that mean? What do it mean to have to, to judge righteously? Well, hold up. I thought just a second ago in Matthew chapter seven, it says, don't judge. You know, so if we go with the, the, the logic that a lot of believers is using to don't judge lest you be judged. That contradicts what John 7, 24 says to judge righteously. So obviously those those two passages mean different things. We have to exegete the scriptures properly in the proper context. We can't read into the scripture what we what we want the definition to be of of judgment or what we you know, what we think it is, what we think it means. But we have to go with what the Bible laid out for us. So righteous judgment is to hold your brother accountable. That's that's what righteous judgment is. You're making a judgment in a righteous way. You're holding you're holding your brother accountable for his actions, but it's not in a harsh way. You're doing it out of love. 
you know, you're holding a person accountable. You know, if, if you got a brother who's a professing follower of Christ, follower of the Messiah, and he's teaching children, you know, to go and steal or to go and, you know, smoke weed or do drugs or something, he's misleading that he's sinning. He's causing that child to stumble. He's sinning. He's misleading that child. You know, and Christ said it, it'd be better that a millstone was tied around your neck and you was threw into the sea than to mislead one of these little children. So people that's doing something like that, that's just one example, you know, using a child as an example. But a, per a person that that is doing that, that person needs to be held accountable. You need to, you, you're right there witnessing that brother do that and you're not saying anything, you're just as guilty as him. Silence is approval. Too many of these leaders is in these positions and they are manipulating the sheep. They manipulating the people. They in these positions of power and they abusing their power. They're abusing their authority. You know, so this is what's going on. I just wanted to put this discussion out here. This is part two, pushing the gay gospel you know, slash, let's talk. I have to talk about this. So we're going to just leave out of here with some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just give you all the glory. Father, we thank you for having this discussion. We pray that it touched some hearts. We pray that it touched some souls, some minds, dear Lord, that it was edifying for someone. Dear Father, that it was uh, fruitful, dear Lord, and wholesome. Um, we just pray for all of the all of your children, O oh Lord, all of your people uh, who are being manipulated, who are being uh, used and abused by these leaders. Uh, Lord, we just know that that is not this. That is not your Holy Spirit that's upon these men. Dear Lord, we know that they're operating from another spirit. Dear Lord, that doesn't have your power and your authority. We just pray that. Uh, we continue to do your will, O oh Lord, and we continue to work the path of righteousness, O oh God, and just exposing these evil works of darkness that's uh, coming against us as a whole, as a collective. Lord, we just pray that uh, your Holy Spirit surround us, manifest in us, dear Lord, uh, grant us uh, greater power, uh, greater strength to be able to withstand the attacks of the devil. Oh Lord, um, we just pray that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the holy name of Jesus. Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen.